So how did compasses fit into all of this? Okay, this is a pretty standard compass that you would find at camp or on any trip that you might go on. Uh, and compasses have a pretty universal rule that we follow, and uh, that helps us get it or oriented in the right direction, right? Um, compasses, this little red arrow here that rotates around, points to magnetic north, okay? So, the golden rule is we always want to have red in the shed. So we have our direction arrow here on the base plate. We have our magnetic needle, which is pointing north, so it's pointing that way. But I need to get the entire compass pointed in the right direction. So I'm going to put my, I'm going to turn my dial here so that N is lined up with the direction arrow. And then you'll see on the base plate down below, there's a red arrow. I want to put my magnetic needle in that little red space. We call it putting red in the shed. Okay, so now my, my direction arrow, which is up here on the base plate, is pointing north. My magnetic needle is always pointing north. And if I were to try and orient my map, to face north-south as well, I would turn the entire thing and line it up so that the edge of my compass, my direction arrow, and my magnetic arrow are all pointing in the same direction. All right, They're all pointing to magnetic north. Uh, so now you've oriented your, your map uh, and you can start to take those skills uh, and apply them into the real the next thing we're going to look at are contour lines. Okay, These are these brown lines that you find all over maps, and they help us determine elevation and changes in elevation. On this particular map, our contour interval is 20 feet. So between each brown line that you see, there is an elevation difference of 20 feet. Uh, when there is a, a summit, all right, it's usually de um, denoted by just a circle uh, around where the, the land tops out. You can follow these contour lines to show you where stream beds and valleys are, okay? Usually with the stream creating a, a V-like shape as you see here around Lake Maury. And if you go ahead and think about Eagle's Bluff, right? and how steep it is down to the lake from Eagle's Bluff, on a map, that looks like these contour lines, which are all really close together, showing that the change in elevation, the change in 20 feet, happens really quickly in a very short uh, space. Whereas if you think about horizons and their meadow, right, it doesn't change a lot in elevation. It's very flat uh, throughout. And then if you look at it here on the map, there's not a lot of change in elevation by the contour lines either, right? There's very little brown uh, to show, um, denoting that it's flat. And I think the best way to think about contour lines is to go ahead and grab a, a pen, preferably not a Sharpie, because it's very hard to get off of your hand, um, and make a fist. And on your fist, you're gonna draw some circles as evenly as you can around your knuckles, right? So I have a little tiny circle right at the top of my knuckles, like it would look on a map as if it's a mountaintop. Uh, and I've gone down just three or four circles to show what that looks like. And when I put my hand flat, like it would be on a map, it starts to look more like contour lines, right? Uh, areas in between two peaks might not have a lot of contour lines because they might be flat. There's not enough elevation change to add anything in there. Um, and this side you might think is really steep, right? Uh, whereas in the middle between my two knuckles is a little flatter. So that's a good exercise to kind of show you uh, how contour lines and mountains and valleys are shown on a map. Okay, time for a little map and compass here, everybody. Now, the first thing we're going to try to do is see if we can't find camps on the maps. We'll start with Aloha. 
So first things first, this is the, the state of Vermont, right? This is the Fairley Quadrangle, okay? Pretty standard uh, map if you've done anything at Camp Craft or in Tripping, uh, Woodchuck Hole. Uh, so first we find Lake Maury, right? Pretty well identified. Uh, and we gotta use some of our surroundings to see if we can't figure out uh, where Aloha is. So first thing, uh, if you remember looking out, uh, say from Wishing Fire, um, we know there's the road that runs all the way around the lake. And if we look out across, we pretty easy to recognize that Maury Mountain uh, where the Palisades is, is kind of just off to our right. We know that the Lake Morian, we can see that diagonally across the lake. Um, and we know, like, if we're driving around, we pass the boat ramp. Uh, so we can tell pretty quickly, based on some things that we can just see, that Aloha is probably somewhere in this vicinity, right? And if we look up towards Eagle's Bluff, right, when we hear the classic uh, aloha, uh, that it gets pretty steep up in there. So we know we're not based right at the bottom of that. We're a little off to the side. Uh, and all of those things can tell us that aloha will be found right around in here. Knowing that, Aquila, just down the road, okay, uh, not quite where this point is, but we know that there's a lot of flat land down by the tennis courts and archery. We know there's a big meadow up through hillside, all right? And we know there's a sharp turn right in front of the main house. So if you're at Lana Kila, this is right about where you are. You will hive. Hive. Got to come all the way down to Lake Fairley over here. Um, and it might be easiest to find Horizons first, right? We know Horizons has got a big meadow. Uh, running right through the middle of their campus. So we can pretty quickly establish that Horizons might be this giant piece of white on our, on our map, right? White symbolizes some open spaces. Green, for, a lot of forested land, right? Where you are, the Green Mountain State. And blue is water. So if we know that that's Horizons right there, just around the bend, because... Hive isn't on the big point that comes out, uh, but it's, it does have its own little point. So Hive is just down here. Uh, this road is up to, to Wilson's farm, right? Uh, so again, we just were able to find four of the camps. Uh, and if you were trying to find Ohana, uh, you know it's directly across from Horizons. So we can pretty quickly establish that Ohana's waterfront uh, is probably somewhere down here, okay? It's got a little bit more protection, uh, a little harder to, to find um, in that corner of the lake. So pretty quickly, we've been able to establish where all five campuses are.